This studio is filled with lots of color. Everything is so vibrant, but there's lots of love in this studio, isn't there, Alice? Absolutely. That's the only thing I work with. here in Burbank, California to celebrate the life, legacy, and body of work of Alice Asmar. She's an extraordinary, internationally acclaimed and renowned visual artist, as well as writer and art educator, somebody who's inspired young minds for decades. She is somebody who loves life. She's passionate, she's enthusiastic. She believes in living the life experience. She's also very spiritual as well, and you can see that reflected in so much of her work. She says prayer is painting, painting is prayer. Also for her, painting is like breathing because it gives her such life. So we're here to celebrate the legacy of the extraordinary Alice Asbar. You're somebody who feels as though you are sort of a facilitator, you're a conduit. You are being inspired by something when you paint mm -hmm. these gorgeous pieces of work. You are being inspired by something greater than yourself, right? Tell us about that. Yes, I believe in God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and I pray to them and ask them to fill me with an inspiration that will inspire others. And I feel that the only way I can inspire others is to be inspired by the great creators that put us on this planet. Early on, you were noticed as a child prodigy, especially mm -hmm. when it came to creating these beautiful pieces of visual art. Tell us, what was the first essence of inspiration for you? Was it your parents? Where yes. did that inspiration come? Yes, because I was tracing little designs on the floor on the carpeting and my mother noticed and she gave me paper and crayons and uh, I started drawing and I was drawing everything. I was drawing people, I was drawing roosters, I loved animals and I was drawing like uh, little cats. I even tried to put the cat in a little uh, buggy because <laughs> my parents had a ma and pa grocery store and I remember growing up in the depression era when people felt that money was tight and I guess it was for some but if you read Getty's book he says uh, there's no such thing except in your brain mm -hmm. uh, he made his best money in the depression and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. so my parents anyway were generous with giving millions of sandwiches to people that came to their store. Mm. I don't know how much money they were making, but they were very giving, generous, wonderful people. And mom was generous with the crayons and the paper. And that's when I started painting at the age of two. What were some of the first things that you painted with crayons? Well, people and, uh, and animals and uh, buildings and everything that I saw. I mean, it was my vocabulary in visuals instead of in words. They were very, and my parents were very giving in the sense of they wanted me to be my own person. They said, you're in this country where there's a lot more opportunities than the country that we left, and we want you to make something of yourself. Do well in school. So I got straight A's in school. I was good academically all the way through to the master's degree and and uh, it was easy for me. And so I helped the teachers by doing big drawings in their classrooms when they wanted to teach children mm -hmm. geography and they wanted to have a big drawing of South America or Europe or whatever and I would help them. And they would take me out of class because they knew I was doing well 
uh, academically because they didn't want to deprive children from learning. Sure. That was against their rules. And the art teacher was wonderful. Oh, she gave me transparent paper and uh, I painted I, what I consider my first murals. Transparent paper and watercolors, so you can imagine how crinkly it got. Mm -hmm. But it didn't matter. I was on the floor painting my first mural, and then they put it on the window. And they created um, a very interesting Christmas scene, because my first big mural was of the Madonna and the Christ Child and the angels. And they put me on the table, photographed me, and put me on the front page of the Oregonian. So I knew that, and they had the children singing Christmas carols outside of my window. What do you think inspired you to paint the Madonna and oh God, do yeah, Jesus? You think even early oh, on, yes. you were you had a early on. A real I had a feeling that there was something, that there was that something was, greater than me that really? existed. Yeah. Did a lot of things come to you? naturally or yes. almost effortlessly? I felt everything was easy and fun. Well, other kids might have struggled in certain happy. areas. And huh? for you, it just, was, you get it quick. And then they would uh, choose me as room representative to represent them. You know, when I was supposed to be the one that would make the decisions for the children that were less uh, uh, sure of themselves, sure, right, you might exactly. say. And I loved all of them. I did drawings of them and gave them drawings and they they felt good around me because I felt good around them. And then people were starting to really notice more and more this yeah. talent. You talk about high school and then Well, you... because in high school I would enter yeah. uh, contests, contests also. Right. And right. and win awards and be shown with the other artists that were winning awards and it, it became a I was sure of myself by that time because it seemed like everything I entered I would get an award. The teachers wanted my mother to put me in private school because, you know, they said a girl like that is academically way up there and, you know, does art and music and everything and athletics, you should have her in a private school. My mother said, no, thank you. I want my daughter to be democratic. I want her to get along with all the people in the world. To all no the different matter how different they are, I want my daughter to religions, be with everyone. Perspectives. Yes. Right, right. And, she, and that was a great decision your mother made. Oh, right? she was Gave smart. You appreciation and understanding. She wanted of the me world. to appreciate everybody and get along with everyone. That you might not have if everything was uh, so uh, yeah. homogenized, perhaps. That's right, homogenized. So, how has that, that's a great point there, how has has that, even that early decision that your mother made, your mother with the crayons that she had for you, your yeah. mother now saying, I want you to have influences of all cultures and people, how has that also inspired your art? Well, it makes me feel very open and, and happy because I don't feel like I'm rejected by anyone. I was always kind of questioning everything about everything and it was you might say it stemmed from my mother's very open, wonderful view of life. Yes. And my father, too. Your father he was a father. singer, and hundreds of people came to the house to hear him sing those great, wonderful Arabic songs. I don't know how he held his breath the way he did. But they have a thing about the way they sing. Instead of one straight sound, like an A, they would go to different sharps and flats and A and B and string out what I call that long line of, of melodic, mm -hmm. lineal gorgeousness that you would hear in your ears. It was absolutely amazing. I feel that I was surrounded by the riches of life with my parents. They showered you in love and attention oh, and support. Oh, absolutely. Mm. But I was an only child and I didn't like that. Early on, I uh, had a hat because I said, well, I want a brother. And they said, the friends of my mom said, well, she'll have to go to the hospital and then she'll, you know, come, come back with a little brother. And I said, oh. And so they said, and the hospital's gonna cost a lot of money. So I got some little hat or cap or something and passed it around. I wanted money so I could send my mother to the hospital and she could get a little brother for me. Would you say that this desire and passion you have for creating worlds mm -hmm. through your work, expression, passion through your work, life, love, mm -hmm. 
through your work, mm -hmm. influences of the divine through your work. Was any of this sort of your own playground, your own escapism? Did you escape early on as a child into this world of creativity and art and painting as a result? of being an only child as well. You created sort of your own canvas in addition to having you know, family around as well. Well, those are very good uh, comments that you're making. And it uh, makes me realize that, well, one of the important things I feel right now is that when the children would go home after we were playing and I'd be all alone, I, I would turn to my drawings because then I could see the little animals that I would draw and remember how much fun it is, you know, with the little feathers on the rooster. Because I had four bantam roosters as pets when I was a, a child, and and I loved them dearly. And so, uh, it, it, when the children would go home and I would be alone, I would turn to drawing because there's only so much communicating and uh, enjoyment you can get from adults that are that much older than you are, you know, it's your parents are much older and you have a certain relationship, but it's not like with the kind of relationships you would have with the children or with a sister and brother, as I imagined a sister and brother would be like the children who went home. Mm -hmm. So I turned to the drawing and I drew a lot because I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah. I was thinking of it as I'm creating a world outside of myself that I love, and that world is different than I am. Mm. And I used to tell students, don't just think of me, 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 right, and self-expression, right. right. but try to learn more mm -hmm. about the external world mm. and what it's doing to the way so you it's, think and it's a feel. blending of elements of yourself oh, yes. combined the with take. the expression of the world, right? And absorbing yeah. that and using elements of that in your work, which is a beautiful and often unique way to go about it because people do focus on uh, wanting to express their yeah. vision, what they see, what they, you know, and there are some artists where that's beautiful to see things through their eyes, mm -hmm. but you tend to incorporate everything. And that's one thing that it leads me to this in question, because when we were chatting on the radio and when we went to the dinner the other night, uh -huh. you said something that was really interesting, because people often ask you, how do you describe, how do you define uh -huh. your visual art? And, and how do you categorize it? How do you label it? And you said pretty much it's like the entire vocabulary. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, when people say, what kind of work do you do? I say, I do the whole vocabulary. <laughs> right. I do landscapes, I do seascapes, I do portraits of people, of animals, I do uh, machinery. I even worked for Boeing and did drawings of the airplanes and they wanted me to be an aeronautical engineer because I was doing so well and they put me in the, uh, the uh, prime position at Boeing's and wanted uh, me to really go on with it. And they paid me to learn engineering drafting, which I think was the best drawing class I ever had. It was took, wonderful. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not, it was very precise yeah, and all that, but I liked it. Yeah, I like precision. Too. I like clarity. When I say whole vocabulary, I mean the whole vocabulary, visual vocabulary, uh, because uh, that would mean I have to learn new and different things sometimes, use different colors, explore into an area that I don't am not familiar with. And to me, that is exciting about learning about life, is that you don't just repeat yourself over and over again in a dull, kind of monotonous way. You, you go out, you branch out, you learn from something that's totally different than yourself or a person that's different and has different ways of looking at the world. And to me, that is really living fully. There's a couple of things that I noticed when doing the research for the interview that really stood out for me, a lot of things actually. Uh -huh. But for the purpose of this interview, uh, you say, and I think it, they're beautiful things, for you, mm -hmm. painting is like breathing and mm -hmm. painting is prayer. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if I would no longer paint, I would not be breathing. I would not be alive. 
I may be, uh, you know, still talking to people and walking and doing things, but from the standpoint of really feeling fully alive, Living. I would feel the vibrancy would be gone. And um, prayer is automatic for me. I pray every minute, thanking God for giving me the abilities. And, as, and the more I thank Him, the more the abilities seem to increase and get better. And I think, well, you know, what used to take maybe 10 hours to paint takes 10 minutes now. And thank you, Lord. You know, I thank Him constantly because I feel that I am an expression of this great power that's within all of us. And that's why I can't help saying, and I've told this many times, publicly and to just a few people talking to them, I said, I want to contact all eight billion people on the planet personally, but I know that this is kind of impossible from the time point of view. And also, you know, even uh, trying to reach all of them in all the different countries. But maybe, just maybe, if God gives me enough ability, I can reach them through, we have radios now, we have tablets, we have uh, uh, you know, television, we have all kinds of means of communication so that we can talk to the others mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we can even see the crowds responding to us in the uh, communication uh, implements I call them mm -hmm. and so I say I really honestly want to reach these people you know if you want to reach people you're happy I feel so happy when I'm reaching out Do you feel also as you're painting that, you talk about healing, mm -hmm. that a lot of what you do provides much more than just the visual stimulation and enjoyment of the setting, the colors, the nuances of the actual piece. You have a message in a way that goes deeper. You want people left with a sense of love and joy and solace and appreciation for the things that are around us. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing goes deeper and beyond just the physical beauty of your expertise and your work and your eye. Mm -hmm. You want each piece to have a depth to it that impacts them in ways greater than they could have ever imagined, right? And that's why I pray, because I feel that I'm not the one that's going to put that inspiration and love and greatness and all the good feelings, etc. into it. It will be this marvelous creator, whatever you want to call him or her or whatever uh, power, energy, that, that I pray that that will inspire me to the point that whatever I do with paint, canvas, paper, pencils, pastels, that they will be uh, the result of, of higher thinking, higher consciousness. I think it's great that we have these things, the television, Digital the Digital advancements the, and technology. Uh, and technology and uh, all the things that, you know, you try to talk to someone and they have a little rectangular thing at the ear and they're Cell listening phone. to somebody else. Well, it could be something else. It could be a tablet, it could be a computer, it could be, you know, Anything, all kinds everything. of intricate things that we have that separates us from life. From each other, yeah. And this is what I would want for the world, 
that it gets back to some of that togetherness. Well, one thing I notice in this studio, which I think is extraordinary, is how natural and authentic it is. You don't see any of that in here. You don't see all of that technology in here. You no. see, you know, there's the desk, there are the brushes, there yeah. are the paints, there's the, you know, the easel, the canvas, mm -hmm. everything is just right here in an old school way, in a natural way. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you prefer to work, right? Oh, absolutely. Because people have said, well, why don't you paint on the computer? No way. I want to feel the brush. I want to feel the hairs of the brush and the paint. I want this in my hands. I want it to be a complete contact. I'm not afraid of, of brushing up with that which is alive. Well, of course, I could say, well, the phone is alive, but it's not alive until you talk into it. I mean, of course, it has its little vibrations and it is alive. Everything is alive on the planet. Even the tables are vibrating. Everything vibrates, but on a certain level. Not all are vibrating at a top, higher consciousness level. And the higher you go, it's like, if you listen to Mozart's music, and a lot of college students do when they're studying for tests because it raises their IQ 10 points. Higher consciousness is what will help our civilization overcome the destruction that so many seem to want to head toward. So it sounds like the world needs a dose of Alice Asmar everywhere and Mozart piping through the streets. <laughs> that may help it calm down a little, right? <laughs> I think that is in order ASAP. Well, thank <laughs> Those you two things and you've got it made. I feel that um, color uh, quite often can express a boldness, a strong statement that you believe fully and you wish others could maybe, uh, if they don't believe the way you do, at least modify their beliefs so that they can be strong in their beliefs and um, be bold about it and not hesitant and hiding behind something that they don't fully endorse. And that way they can improve, I think, and we all can improve then the relationship that we have with the great world we live in because it's, on, it's honest. It's the way I don't understand it now, but I will understand it better tomorrow or however we look through these uh, paths that we go through in, in trying to gain more understanding and more enjoyment of the world that we live in. Let's talk about some of the work itself because you have been highly rewarded, awarded, mm -hmm. accolades galore. We could do a whole interview just on the amount of rewards, recognition, accolades. None of that is why you do, again, the work. It comes from the work. Mm -hmm. Letters from governors, even a letter we see on the wall from the legendary actor Vincent Price. I mean, it just comes yeah. from every source from around the world. What are some of those pieces that you have created that have been really noted by others tremendously? Well, Jim, one of the uh, important pieces that I've done that many people have responded to is called The Clothesline. And that was when I was living in Santa Monica in a tiny apartment, which 
became my studio. And I actually took the great big piece of paper, which is three feet by six feet, out to uh, the outdoors and started in with my indelible India inks, making this drawing of Santa Monica. And at that time, you could hear all of the voices of the people on the different rides. It was kind of like a Disneyland thing. And um, it was just uh, marvelous. I mean, I was actually involved with life itself right there outside. And there was her clothesline. And it was, I thought, a universal statement of what so many people do. They hang their clothes on a clothesline. Mm -hmm. And you don't really see many paintings of that very uh, universal thing no. that is done by so many Everyday people. Life. And so right. I felt good about it. And one of the things I was dealing with from the standpoint of technique in the art is that usually we think of things that are far away from us as being indistinct and fuzzy visually, and that which is close to us is being clear and sharp. And I was using a reversal of that idea because everything in the distance, you know, the people riding on the uh, different um, kinds of things like the dipper and, and things that would throw them upside down and even the little um, bus on the uh, streets that they had there in Venice, uh, all of those things were super sharp mm. and clear and I made them sharp with my ink drawing and then the clothesline because the winds came up the, the clothes would be blowing mm. so you couldn't really see them with clarity because they were blowing and they were in motion and so I was dealing with a reversal of a common idea that everybody was making static, that everything in the distance is unclear and fuzzy and that everything close up you can see clearly. And I was reversing it in my drawing. And so it was, uh, it was exciting for me to do that kind of thing because I was dealing with art principles and I was dealing with the, the, um, uh, the human beings that do the washing of the clothes and I was dealing with a lot of elements and that's what's so important and that's why it's not for me just self-expression it's for me a learning experience mm -hmm. and I feel that I use my talent to learn more right about people There's gifts in life. you bring to the table yes. that are complemented by life's observations life's experiences would you say that you are an observer of life Yes, I love to observe life and to be partaking of it at the same time that I'm making observations. That's important what uh, you just said, because there's a lot of people who observe it, comment on it, but uh -huh. they don't involve themselves in it oh, or that, live yeah, in that's it. That's a mistake from my point of view. Right. So I think that it. to really observe it, you should be a part of it as well. In addition to your mm -hmm. wonderful role as an art educator and a visual artist, you're also a wonderful writer too. And you've penned this fantastic book, Dance to the Great Spirit. What was the source of inspiration for this book and what was the process like writing this book? And and go over what it's all about. I mean, I've been reading it and it's absolutely incredible. Not just the visual mm -hmm. content, but everything that goes along with it that is so empowering and inspiring. Tell us about this book, which I know is a labor of love for you. Well, as you know, a friend took me to, in fact, he was my um, um, fiance for a while because he was killed, but he was from New Mexico. And he said, oh, Alice, you've got to go see those Indians in New Mexico. They are just really amazing. And I said, well, you always talk about them. He had been a minister and he had ministered for some of the Indians who were poorly treated by other people of the Caucasian race, unfortunately. Uh, but I went down there and and he took me to see some of the dances that they do and they were dancing as um, David would dance in the Old Testament and singing and doing music, praising God. Oh, only they called God the Great Spirit. And they would thank God for all of the 
food that he has given us for the animals. And in fact, if, if they would kill an animal, it was either for food or clothing. They never killed as a sport to show an animal's head on their wall and their den or anything. That would be totally, totally anti-Indian. And I loved that. I loved the love that they had for life. And I thought, gee, these are great people. And they, they were here before the white people came, and I want to know more about them. So they, you know, love is contagious. They knew that I respected and loved them, and they told me things that they didn't tell others of my race because they trusted me, and I, I enjoyed knowing that. I enjoyed having the friendships with them and learning about their culture. And of course, I painted them, just like um, one of the paintings in there of uh, David Toloman, the, the Navajo husband of um, Anasita Toloman. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a Navajo, and she was... Uh, an, an Indian from uh, uh, the one of the Pueblos. So um, he said, you know, we have a song and music for everything we do. Like when the women are grinding corn, mm. we have a corn mm -hmm. grinding song. Yeah. We have uh, a, a song for every activity that is done by us. So when you're painting, I'm going to be playing my drum and doing the painting of of a picture. I mean, this yeah. is extraordinary. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, you see it all happening. Oh, and the right there. They wear the symbols of yeah. life, you know, the, sure. the greenery and the feathers of the birds and, and then the, the foxes behind the men uh, representing the animal world. In other mm. words, they're giving praise and thanks to the Great Spirit for all that they enjoy and use on the planet. And artists' and sacred journeys into American yeah. Indian ceremonies. They're Paintings very, and text by Alice Asmar. For, yeah. Oh, my God, I just love those people. Well, you've been doing this for so long, and you, it's in your DNA. It's, it's a reflection of who you are, this work. Yeah, it's Ever my since breathing. It's your breathing, it's your prayer. Why does this work continue all these years later, bring you such fulfillment, satisfaction, and deep joy, Alice Asmar. I don't know why it brings me that joy, but it does. And so I continue to do it. Even, the, even when I've had to work full-time, you know, as a professor or at the uh, Boeing aircraft or wherever it was I was working, I would also have to be painting every day because it was, for me, breathing and being in touch with the great creator and therefore being in touch with life. So you'll at never the stop. Level. Never stop. You'll keep going. Can't stop. You'll keep going. Yeah. Even I feel I will be doing it when I leave the planet Beyond. in my human body, I'll still be doing it. But for you, with the amount of work you have done, mm -hmm. personally, professionally, um, just as an independent artist all these mm -hmm. years, child prodigy to a renowned, beloved artist. Why does this still continue to bring you such extraordinary joy? And when you are gone, as you say, you'll continue painting even beyond mm -hmm. yeah. being here on Earth. What do you hope will be the lasting legacy via all of this creativity mm -hmm. that you've created for all of us and the greater good of all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, I've said this over and over to so many people that I want to leave a body of work that will be an inspiration to other human beings. Uh, inspire them to feel strong about themselves and their relationship to life and God and the higher consciousness that exists for all of us if we're willing to work with it. But I hope that my work, in some small way, will help them to realize what's within themselves. And, what, and I'm hoping my work will truly be inspirational to others. And, that's, and it inspires me to do the work. So I keep on working because I'm inspired by the great 
Holy Spirit that exists for all of us and and I keep working as a result. Even if I say, I'm tired and I don't want to work tonight, I get up and I start working. You still do. Because I love it. And it's telling me something about life that I, every moment it tells me something different. And so there's a never ending wanting to discover more about this beauty of this we call it life, but I don't know what it is. It's so mm -hmm. magnificent, so big, so ununderstandable, but I want to be part of it. And you certainly are, and continue to be, and you have been, and you also have inspired so many young minds, too, who have considered pursuing their dreams and their hopes and their desires in a mm -hmm. beautiful way as an art That's educator true. as well, and teaching oh, yeah. those who have wanted to do this kind of work as well. Alice Asmar, you're a joy to interview and a joy to personally know. And we thank you so very much for inviting us into your studio, to your life, to your home. Mm -hmm. And we hope we get a chance to explore more down the line. But this was really a wonderful conversation. And we hope somebody watching is inspired, even if it's just one person, by mm -hmm. your words and this legacy of beautiful work that you've shared with all of us. Thank you for being with us, Alice. It was a true honor and a pleasure to meet you in person. Well, thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure and an honor for me to be here. You're very welcome. So as you can see, Alice Asmar truly is the real deal, as authentic as they come. She expresses her love for life, joy, beauty, a celebration of cultures and people and nature through her extraordinary legacy and body of work. What a wonderful experience to come here to Burbank, California to really see it all up close and personal. It is really beautiful and the energy in here is breathtaking. She says that she's inspired by something larger than herself, a true sense of the divine, the true spiritual nature. That's what she's all about and we're so blessed by the opportunity to come here to experience her and her work. To learn more about our special guest, Alice Asmar, visit her website, aliceasmarinternational.com. At the Alice Asmar Studios in Burbank, California, for Close-Up Television, I'm Jim Masters.